All right, so today's video, what we are going to be talking about is the original NES here. Not just any NES, this one specifically. And uh, <clears throat> I have lots of memories playing this with my mom before she passed away. And uh, how much specifically she liked playing Mario Brothers 3. Probably her favorite game on the system. I don't remember playing any other one with her. And definitely, she wasn't much of a gamer, but she could kick my ass at Super Ma at Mario 3. So, basically, throughout the years, its age started to show, and it got to where it hardly wouldn't play games at all. Like, I'm talking about, I would go clean the pins on the cartridges with uh, isopropyl alcohol, do whatever, try to do everything that I could, and it would, I mean, it would take like 20 tries to get it to actually initially play the game. Had all kinds of issues with it to the point where this basically just got shelved, and it, I've only played it maybe once or twice a year on special occasions, and... Sadly, what I did as a fix for the time is I went and picked up a Hyperkin Retron 1 AV to kind of replace it. And if you've seen other videos on my channel where I'm playing NES games, that's what I'm using is the Retron. Just because I could put a game in, first try, it worked every time. So, one of the things I'm going to be talking about today where cartridges will not read no matter what you do. A really, I feel like it's a fairly simple fix and it's a cheap fix is you need to replace your 72 pin connector. I did that with mine and now it's it's as reliable as the new, as the, using the Retron. So I want to go ahead and show y'all just how easy it all works now. Uh, so this is the screen that the retro tank defaults to. Go ahead, hold this up here. It's in there, not pushed down. Press the button, just like it's supposed to. Now, this is showing a little bit of stretch on the recording, but I am I have it pulled up on my other monitor here, and it's not stretched. This is something that OBS is doing. I'm sure I could go in and change it, and I might will later on, but, I mean, it just works super easily. I'm going to go ahead and show a second game here, show that it wasn't just, like, a fluke thing. I have Castlevania in there now, one of the only other games that I play out of my collection, and it just works. So, yeah, a 72-pin connector is a very good thing to do if you're having lots of issues out of your NES and having, you know, random crashes during the middle of gameplay or having issues getting game, you know, getting games to start up, 72 pin connect connector replacement may be what you need to do. They're fairly cheap. Uh, they're so I got mine from Stone Age Gamer. You can find them a bunch of other places, Amazon, multiple different uh Retro shops, I think uh, Castlemania sells them as well. They may all be coming from one supplier, I don't know. But they're all, I think, around the 9 to $12 range. Just who, basically just pick who you prefer to make purchases with. And get you a 72-pin connector and have your NES working basically as good as brand new. So the only issue that I do have with the new 72-pin connector is... Uh, with the, so far in my experience with the games, you stick it in directly like this and it works and plays, which is a positive, but when I push it down, like how it was intended, it, uh, the games tend to stop reading, which I haven't tried doing it very much, just one or two times and noticed that it wouldn't read, it just read with it pushed straight in. Now, this isn't the bit, this isn't really a big issue to me, because I have seen other Retro YouTubers in their videos talk about how pushing the cartridge down like that 
causes stress on the pins of the cartridges itself. And if you can get it to read without pushing it down, that is preferable. So, since it is working that way, I don't like the fact that it doesn't work the intended way, but only working like that, I'm okay with it. Simply because I don't, I want to put at the least amount of stress on my equipment as I need. If, uh, if anyone would like for me to make a video showing how to disassemble the NES and change the 72 pin connector, I'd be more than happy to do that. I didn't think to do that when I replaced this one just because I was so excited to get it swapped out and get this back playing because it does have such a sentimental value to me. So, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead, leave the video here. If there's any more information you would like, if there's some, uh, you know, specific video you would like me to make, I don't mind. I'll jump back on here, make a quick video talking about or showing whatever it is that needs to be talked about and showed. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.